Hello, welcome everybody. This is Dr. Bolad. Today I will talk to you about a very common heart rhythm abnormality known as atrial fibrillation. I will talk about the classification of atrial fibrillation, the symptoms it causes, and the complications of atrial fibrillation. For those who are new to my channel, I am a board certified cardiologist and interventional cardiologist. And here on this channel, you will find lots of information about heart health and heart disease. So if you are interested, don't forget to subscribe and switch on the notification bell so you don't miss any new videos that I post. So let's get started with this video about atrial fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation is the most commonly diagnosed heart arrhythmia. Atrial fibrillation is generally associated with irregularly irregular heart rhythm that is usually fast as can be seen here on the right side of the screen. In atrial fibrillation, the heart's upper chambers, known as the atria, beat irregularly and chaotically, out of sync with the lower chambers of the heart, which are known as the ventricles. You can compare and contrast the heart beating in atrial fibrillation seen on the right side of the screen to the normal heart beating on the left side of the screen. Atrial fibrillation is classified according to its duration and length of the episodes. The classification of atrial fibrillation includes paroxysmal atrial fibrillation, that's to say self-terminating or intermittent or revert to normal sinus rhythm with intervention within seven days of onset. Episodes may recur with variable frequency. Persistent atrial fibrillation. This fails to self-terminate within seven days. Episodes often require medications or electrical cardioversion to restore the normal sinus rhythm. While a patient who has had persistent atrial fibrillation can later have episodes of paroxysmal atrial fibrillation, generally atrial fibrillation is considered a progressive disease. Long-standing persistent atrial fibrillation. This refers to atrial fibrillation that has lasted for more than 12 months. Permanent atrial fibrillation. This refers to persistent atrial fibrillation for which a joint decision by the patient and clinician has been made to no longer pursue rhythm control strategy. While atrial fibrillation typically progresses from paroxysmal to persistent status, patients can present with both types throughout their lives. Atrial fibrillation can also be classified based by the way it presents or whether a specific heart valve condition is present. Subclinical or occult atrial fibrillation. This is atrial fibrillation that is largely asymptomatic and only becomes apparent in the setting of heart clot embolic event, acute heart failure exacerbation, other medical illness, or upon routine electrocardiogram, generally known as ECG, when it is done for other purposes. Valvular atrial fibrillation. This refers to atrial fibrillation in patients with moderate to severe mitral valve stenosis. These patients have a higher risk of stroke than patients without this condition. The term lone atrial fibrillation is a historical term that is now not generally used, and it may be confusing and does not enhance patient care. The term lone atrial fibrillation has been used to describe atrial fibrillation in younger patients, generally less than 60 years of age, with either paroxysmal, persistent, or permanent atrial fibrillation who have no structural heart disease or cardiovascular risk factors. 
These characteristics identify a group of individuals with a low risk of clot formation and who are at the lowest risk of clot embolization from the atrial fibrillation. Some patients who develop atrial fibrillation might not experience any symptoms initially, and the diagnosis of atrial fibrillation is clinched on a routine ECG during a doctor's office visit or during blood pressure monitoring when the device tells you that the pulse is irregular, and more recently the use of smart watches which measure the pulse, and this may indicate that your pulse is irregular and that your heart rhythm is in atrial fibrillation. Other patients develop a wide array of symptoms including palpitations, fast heart rate, fatigue, weakness, dizziness, lightheadedness, reduced exercise capacity, increased urination, and mild shortness of breath. Some patients may have more severe symptoms. These include shortness of breath at rest, angina, presyncope or syncope, symptoms of stroke or other clot embolic event, symptoms of heart failure such as shortness of breath, on exertion, lower leg swelling, weight gain, and abdominal swelling from fluid accumulation. Complications. Although atrial fibrillation can be without symptoms in some patients, it is still remains a serious heart rhythm abnormality due to two main reasons. The first is that the irregularity of the heart beating can lead to clot formation in the heart, and these clots can move to different parts of the body, giving rise to significant complications such as, for example, a stroke. Secondly, the fast heart rate of atrial fibrillation will eventually weaken the heart and give rise to heart failure in the long term. The following are the serious complications of atrial fibrillation. A stroke. This is the most frequent major complication of atrial fibrillation. A clot that forms in the heart due to the atrial fibrillation dislodges and travels to the brain, blocking blood flow to a segment of the brain, leading to an ischemic stroke. Cognitive impairment and dementia. Atrial fibrillation increases the risk of cognitive impairment, all cause dementia, vascular dementia, and Alzheimer's disease. Heart failure. Atrial fibrillation is a risk factor of new onset heart failure. This is due to the fact that either that the heart rate has been high for some time or due to the dyssynchrony from the abnormal heart beating pattern. Heart attack. Atrial fibrillation can lead to clots that travel down the coronary arteries and block blood flow to the muscle of the heart, leading to a heart attack. Atrial fibrillation can also lead to heart attack from demand ischemia, the so-called type 2 myocardial infarction, due to a high heart rate. Increased risk of death. Atrial fibrillation is an independent risk factor for death across a wide age range in both men and women, but the evidence is insufficient to establish atrial fibrillation as a cause of excess death rather than just a marker of high risk. In subsequent videos, I will talk about how to diagnose atrial fibrillation and how to treat atrial fibrillation. If you have any question about what I presented to you today, then subscribe to my channel and share your question in the comment section below and I will reply to you. If you have a question that you would not like to share in public, then follow me on Twitter or Instagram at Dr. Bolad and then send me a private direct message.
and I will reply to you. If you found value in this video, then please like and share this video with family and friends. This is Dr. Bolad helping you with your heart health. Thanks for watching and talk to you soon.